Hey, welcome to the fifth video in this series on comic book production. I am Tucker from Platform Comics. In this video, I'm going to talk about what I did in videos number three and four uh, and how to do those same things, but with free open source software. So essentially everything that I did in InDesign, I'm going to use another software called Scribus or Scribus. Looks like this. And for everything I did in Photoshop, I'm going to use a software called Krita or Krita. I don't know. I'm going to go over everything pretty quickly. I'm kind of just going to replicate exactly what I did in those videos. I'm not going to explain why I'm doing things or the pros and cons. I would go back and watch those videos for a more in-depth look at why I'm making these decisions. So I'm going to do the, the Photoshop stuff first. There are a few like free Photoshop alternatives. There's one called GIMP, which is really popular. There's another website called Ph Photopia which is very similar to Photoshop, but completely online. And these are both great, but there were a few limitations and things that I was trying to do that I just couldn't do or couldn't figure out how to do. And so I settled on this other app called Krita. Krita. Um, it's more of a drawing app, but it can do everything that I needed to do for comic book production stuff. So I'm going to follow the same uh, exact process I did for the other Photoshop video. I'm going to start with a file that is, you know, wrong. It's the wrong format, the wrong DPI, the wrong size, the wrong color space, etc. So I'm going to drag it in to Krita. Okay, so just like last time, the first thing I'm going to do is figure out how to make this JPEG into a TIFF. So I'm going to go up here to file and export. I'm going to select TIFF from the drop down menu. And I'm just going to call it step two, TIFF. Again, I'm just going through the steps, not explaining why. Go back and watch the old video for that. Uh, it gives you this compression option. You can choose LZW compression, which I guess stands for Lempel, Ziv, and Welch. Um, and I'm just going to hit OK. And then if I go out here, you can see, just like last time, the TIFF image is a lot larger. And again, I'm not adding any, any information, but the nature of TIFF means it's a lot bigger. So let me open this file in... Krita, it's going to give me this drop down menu. I'm going to say open in new document. So now we have it up here. It's in the form of a TIFF. It looks really blurry, but I think it's just doing that to make the software run faster. The actual TIFF file it's producing, just in case you're wondering, is pretty high quality. So even though it looks kind of blurry and crabby on the software, it doesn't mean it's actually looking like that. Okay, so the other thing we were doing after converting it to a TIFF was making sure that it was in a CMYK. So just like in Photoshop, I can go up here to image, convert, image color space. And just like in Photoshop, I can simply just uh, change the CMYK. But I also want to choose the right color profile. Originally, the only two options that it was giving me was chemical proof and generic CMYK. If you have Adobe software, it automatically comes with all these different color profiles. Um, you can actually grab them from those softwares if you do have them. But if you have those softwares, then I don't know why you would be using this software. So I'm going to pretend you don't have any of these profiles. You essentially just go here and and add the profile. So first you have to download it from somewhere. I literally just went to Google and typed in the file name. And then I just clicked the first link, which was a GitHub link. And then I hit download. And there you go, it was in my downloads. So here I just selected it. And it added it to the list. And so, changed it to CMYK, changed it to Japan Color 2001 Coded. Hit OK. So as you can see, it's in CMYK. Japan Color 2001 Coded, which was the profile we were looking for. So now we got a TIFF file, and it's in the right uh, profile. We're going to hit export. I'm just going to call this number three. Call it CMYK. That's the step we're on. Same compression, everything. And we can see, just like last time, uh, when we switched to CMYK, the file size increased. And the file sizes are very close to the ones uh, from Photoshop. So it's not exactly the same, but it's definitely on par. So now I'll get the CMYK file, open a new document. And again, you don't actually have to do this in a bunch of different files. You could just, uh, you know, edit the same file. I'm just doing it to separate it into all these different steps. So next stage was changing the DPI. So you want to go up here to image, scale image to new size. It's very similar from the Photoshop way. You have the width and height 11 by 17, but the DPI is too high. It's 450, we want it to be 300. Up here are the pixels. And just like in Photoshop, when we change it to 300, the inches width and height stay the same, but the pixels change. So I'll just hit OK. So now we got a TIFF, it's in CMYK, and it's the right DPI. I'm going to export this one. Stage 4, DPI, save, LCW, OK. And just like with uh, Photoshop, we see that the file got cut almost in half, you know, because when you lower the DPI, you're actually getting rid of a bunch of pixels. And so obviously, 
less pixels means less information, means less data, so the file size is smaller. Okay, so let's drag that in. Okay, so now we're going to talk about resizing the image, and this is actually the only step that is slightly more complicated than it is in Photoshop. Everything else up to this point is pretty straightforward. So the easiest way, again, is you just go to Image, Scale Image to New Size, and remember we want it to be 11 by 16 and a half inches. I could just hit 16.5 and hit OK, and essentially all that did was squish the image, which I don't want to do because it's altering the artwork, but, you know, if you want a really easy way to alter the image, there you go. So I'm going to undo. So what I'm going to want to do is the, the crop tool isn't as good in this software as it is in uh, Photoshop. Like you can't type in like uh, the ratio as easily. And so if I want it to be 7 inches by 10.5 was the ratio we were looking for. You can't actually do decimals because it only does pixels. You can't do like inches or anything else. I tried. So what you could do is do like 70 by 105 which should give you the same ratio as 7 to 10.5. To and then you can lock this ratio, and then you can make it bigger, and it'll stay with the right ratio. And that should work out. As you can see, just like the last one, it was a little too tall, so we can slide it up or down depending on what we want to keep. This is similar to what we were doing in InDesign. You can select more of the top. You can hit Enter, and then it'll crop it down to the right size. So now if I go to Scale Image to New Size, you can see it's 11 by 16 and a half, 300 dpi, everything's okay. So you can export that and you'll have uh, your file. But if you want to do it the other way, so now I'm back to my original size, just making sure 11 by 17. See, so if I wanted to try to do it like in Photoshop, they have this like grow button, which means I can go bigger than the canvas, but it won't snap to right there. So it's hard to get it exact. So I, instead of using the crop tool, I can go to resize canvas and make that 16.5 inches. I believe it at 11 inches wide and click that center thing so it, it uh, shrinks it towards the middle. So all it did now was just crop the top and the bottom, which is not what we wanted to do. But what we can do is now we go to layer, which is just selecting this individual item, not the image means like everything in the whole file. Layer is just this one layer, which happens to be one big image. So we go to layer, transform, scale layer to new size and the image is still 11 by 17 you just can't see it it's it's got the extra on the top and the bottom so we're going to lower that to 16.5 and you're going to see the width is going to go to this weird size which is too small but i'm going to hit okay and now you kind of see a similar thing that we saw in photoshop which is we're keeping the height so the height is exactly 16.5 inches which is what we want our file to be we're not losing any pixels we're not cropping anything on the top or the bottom but now we have these gaps on the left and the right so again we could just kind of go to the free transform tool and just stretch the whole thing but that's not very good now you're altering the artwork so it doesn't help so instead what we're going to do is the same thing we did in photoshop which is we get this rectangular selection tool come over here to the edge grab a section of it i'm doing this pretty quick. You could be a little more careful when you do it properly. Hit Command T for transform. Just drag it over to the side. Do the same thing over here. I wanted to get on this left side of the lettering. Command T for free transform. Drag it to the left. And now we have the same result as what we did in Photoshop. Again, that's not the ideal way to do it, but it could be an emergency thing. I even mentioned uh, using like paint bucket occasionally if it's just a solid black or solid white area. So, you know, this has a paint bucket tool. You just drop it right there and you can fill in any kind of gaps with uh, plain black or white or you can select the color if the border is like purple or something you can just grab this purple do the paint bucket and then it will drop that purple color and again we get the benefit that we've kept every single pixel that the artist drew we have everything from the top to the bottom and now we've kind of just stretched that left and right to fit our context so this we can export call it 05 call it crop and there you go. Just like the last one, it got a little bit smaller because we did crop a little bit. Uh, it's it's a TIFF. It's the right DPI. It's uh, CMYK. It's the right uh, width and height. So doing that with this software instead of Photoshop is a little more complicated in some ways, but, you know, it's free. Okay, now we're going to move on to Scribus, which is uh, the InDesign, the free InDesign replacement. So first thing I would say really quick is go over to the Preferences. And there is this section with guides, and I would choose in the foreground for uh, for the guides. 
Uh, you'll see why in a second and just hit OK. You have to do it before you make a document. Uh, I don't know why you can't change it within the document. Maybe you can. I don't know. I haven't used these softwares a bunch. I, you know, I have the Adobe software. I just researched these uh, pretty much just to make these videos. So new document, we're going to go into inches. If you remember our sizes from before, we were doing 6.75 by 10.25. Uh, no margins. Bleeds were 0 0.125. Pretty much exactly the same as InDesign. Hitting OK. So this looks kind of like uh, InDesign. A little uglier, but whatever. So just like InDesign, first thing we're going to do is make an image frame. Unfortunately, this doesn't snap really well. So in InDesign, I would just drag from the corners, but this doesn't snap exactly to the corners. Um, if you hit snap to guides, it will snap to the edge of the red line, but not to the edge of the bleed. This is the edge of the where the cut is going to be, but not to the bleed. And I don't know why it doesn't snap to that line. So instead, what I figured out you can do is you just click and you can type in the exact number, 7 by 10.5. Now we have the frame the right size, but it, again, it does, it'll it snap to that inside line, but not to the bleed. So it's hard to get it perfect. So what I did instead was I would get to this align and distribute window, you pull that up, have it uh, align relative to the page, and then you just uh, select the box and you hit the center vertical button and the center horizontal button, and there you go, it's perfectly aligned. Just like in InDesign, we're gonna make a copy of that page. So we go up here to page, hit copy. I'm gonna make, uh, I'm just gonna make two more copies, have three of these pages, um, and there you go. There's three of them. So now I'm going to place my artwork into this box. So I don't know of a way to import all the images at once like you can in InDesign. Uh, you have to actually select the box and then go to File, Import, Get Image, or just Command-I. These are the images I'm using. I'm going to select the first one. And just like in InDesign, the image is bigger than the frame, so it, it you know looks zoomed in. So what I want to do is go to Item and then put Adjust Image to Frame. So it's essentially fitting the image into the frame that I made before. And as you can see, it looks great. Uh, that setting I changed in the preferences before makes it so that you can see this red line. If not, the artwork will be like in front of the red line, so you can't see it. So this just helps you see where your bleed lines are, and that looks fine. So now I just have to do it again for this one. Do the same thing here. There might be a way to automate this like you can in InDesign, but... I personally do not know how to do it. So, last page. Fit that one. And cool, so you would just do that for every page of your comic. Now, if you wanted to add a spread, you would go to page and then go insert to uh, create a new page. And if you remember how we did it uh, last time, the height was exactly the same because it's like two side-by-side -side pages, but the width is different, so we'll work backwards, and we know we have to start at 14 and then work backwards and drop a quarter inch from that, so it was 13.75. I'm just going to hit OK, and there we go. We got a big one. This one needs an image frame, so same problem as before with the snapping, so I'm just going to click, and I'm just going to type in 14 by 10.5. And again, it's the right size, but not aligned properly, so bring up that align window. Uh, Center it, center it, and there we go. Now I can place the spread, same spread that I had made before, which which is a weird image, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but just for educational purposes, I gotta fit this, and that fits perfectly in the frame. So in InDesign, I did show how like if your page is a little too wide or a little too tall, you can quickly kind of crop it to make it fit. Um, in this software, I could not figure out an easy way to do that. There might be, but so I would just recommend doing it uh, in uh, Krita the way I just showed you, just making sure that your art files are exactly what you need to be printed because it's a little more complicated to do it inside of uh, Scribus, Scribus than uh, it is in InDesign. What you're going to want to do is export your PDF. So if you go to File, you go to Export, Save as PDF, when you want to create your PDF for printing, if you go to color, like it doesn't let you change color stuff if you're in this PDF 1.4 mode. Uh, but if you go to PDF X-1A, which I actually have seen some printing companies specifically uh, specifying that. So then it doesn't actually let you change any color stuff because I think it's automatically CMYK. And then here at the profile, you can select 
a, a CMYK profile. So you can choose Japan Color 2001. Really quick, uh, that ICC profile, which I downloaded before, the way you get it into Scribus, I looked it up. Uh, this is from their wiki. If you scroll down, you'll see how to install additional ICC profiles, and they have the instructions for Windows and Mac. You have to put it in a specific folder. So that'll allow it to show up here. We're making sure that it's uh, in that CMYK mode. We want to use the document bleed so that it gives us all the extra edges. So keep that on. Um, and then back in the general, there was the compression method you want, because this is for print, we want no compression at all. Um, it still lets you choose this, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't do anything. And then you want the maximum image resolution to be 300 dpi for the same exact reason we did it in InDesign. So I'm going to title it comic print, hit OK. Uh, none, none of these things seem important. And there it goes. So there's the PDF. You can see it's a pretty big size, 135 megabytes. Even though it's only four pages, you could say maybe five pages because this one uh, is a double page. But just like an InDesign, if you're working on a 20 to 30 page uh, comic, it should be you know close to a gig. I could open this up, you see all the pages are there. You see that uh, that edge of that painting isn't being uh, cropped out, which if you remember, that's where our bleed lines are. So this tells me that this is in fact the full image. Nothing is being cropped out. Okay, so now we want to make our digital PDF. We would go over here to File, Export, Save as PDF. And now this time, if we want to go to RGB, we got to select one of these other PDF modes. We're going to change the name to Comic Digital. And now we do want to do compression, so we're going to, we're going to choose JPEG. Exactly the same as in InDesign, we have the different options, which you can uh, mess around with to see what size looks better and what kind of how it affects your file size. 300 dpi is still checked and then when we go over to color uh, it's all grayed out but then you can put for images use color profile and then do not use the embedded color profile and I guess that lets you change uh, which one you want to use and so you can select this uh, sRGB IEC which is the one that I usually go with but I don't know if there's much of a difference and then you can hit save and I, I did actually check all these and you do end up with the PDFs that have the correct uh, ICC profile. I just think the scribe is the whole exporting menu and everything can get a little confusing. And again, I haven't spent a ton of time with these uh, two pieces of software. I really just started researching them specifically for this video. So here we have the digital copy, as you can see, a lot smaller. And the pages are there. Uh, the spread is there. It says one big image, which is what we want. So now the only other thing we did in InDesign was make uh, the CBR and CBZ files. And for that, remember, we had to make JPEGs. Now, I read that in the Windows version, if you go to Save as Image, it gives you a JPEG option here. Uh, the Mac version does not have one. So if you have a Mac, you can't really do it through here. So the workaround I found is there's this website called Small PDF, which does a bunch of PDF uh, conversion stuff, and they have this PDF to JPG option. So then you just drag your PDF in here. I'm dragging the digital one, so, and then I'm putting Convert Entire Pages. And here you can see uh, all four of the actual pages. You can hit download here. And this should be extracting all the images in full quality. That's what it says here. And I did uh, double check them and it seems to be exactly the full quality. So here in my downloads folder, I get this comic digital images .zip. And inside there are the four JPEGs. And again, I checked these JPEGs against the InDesign sizes and they seem to be pretty much on point. You can see if I zoom in, they look like pretty good quality JPEGs. So that small PDF website seems to be doing a pretty good job. There might be other websites that do it. There might be other softwares that can extract images from PDFs. Maybe that give you more options, but that one seemed to work. So just like before, what you want to do is highlight all these. And like I mentioned in the previous video, it's important for the page numbers to be clearly numbered so that uh, the CBR and CBZ know what order your pages should be in. So once you select all your JPEGs, you make a zip file. For your CBZ, you just rename it CBZ. CBZ, you hit use CBZ. If I double click it, you'll see it opens in my comic book reader and all the pages are there. Same thing with the RAR file, the same way I did it. And again, I've had issues doing it with Max, but you know, test everything out and make sure it works before you send it out into the world. So yeah, maybe there is a way to export JPEGs from Scribus. I know they have like scripts 
so you can like uh, customize it and have it do a bunch of custom actions. I don't know, maybe it's possible. But anyways, the whole point of this video was just to show that everything I did in Photoshop and InDesign, I could also do with free software. I didn't go into the ins and outs of why I'm making these decisions, the pros and cons. Like I said, watch the actual Photoshop and InDesign videos for that. This one's just uh, kind of a supplement to those. And that's it for the comic production video series. I might add in a few more videos if I think of any other ideas, or, or if you have any specific uh, questions or, or concepts you want explained, maybe I can make another video for that. So thanks for watching. Uh, you should check out platformcomics.com. Uh, we've got a few comic book competitions in the works. We've got a podcast with a bunch of different comic book uh, industry professionals, and a bunch of stuff in the works. So you can follow us on social media. We're at Platform Comics on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And uh, thank you for watching.